York Winter Show gave us time to catch up with designers and see new jewelry trends emerging for spring. Well, Erica, is um, her background is uh, a luge athlete, so her passion has been jewelry, and we have 14 karat and sterling silver. We offer it with or without diamonds. And for this show, we brought in what her interpretation of a standard classic piece in society is a cross, and it's offered with diamonds, they're white diamonds, but what she likes to do is hand carve or make them look more original. And this particular piece is it's offered in a larger size, a medium size, and this is new for the JA show this year, so we're really excited about it. And then we also have a couple of our couture pieces that we thought our client would like to see, to see her range. One is an aquamarine um, stone, a bezel set stone that's encased in 18 karat gold and diamonds. That you can also do with an 18 karat chain if, if the customer wants as well. So our price range here starts at about 6000 depending on the piece, and these are more couture, one-of-a-kind pieces. Um, the cross does come in sterling silver as well, and it comes oxidized too. Um, so we have um, the large nut and the, the thick, thin nut. Both come with or without diamonds. Um, what we like to do and what Erica likes to do is make them large enough so their customer can personalize their own pieces, and our ideal customer ends up collecting them over time. You can start with one piece, you can start with two, and if you notice, the shank on here, the, the jump ring, is actually a little bit larger, and that's specifically so they can custom design their own pieces. So these are new for the JA show, and they've been well received. We're real excited um, about the response from the customers so far, so it's been a good show. Well, the new collection that I'm working on is really um, the crown work, and crown work's the, the motive that I work with. It's open, a grid pattern that takes the weight out of the jewelry. Um, it's the underside of crowns and tiaras basically to take the weight out of them of large European pieces of jewellery. Um, and these new pieces I'm working on are full form um, pieces of crown work. Um, and I can make them really quite large, even you know, up to this kind of size. And they're lightweight and easy to work with. So um, I've always traditionally used um, faceted stones, but now I've just ordered these cabochons in. So I'm working with cabochon and combination of cabochon and faceted, combination of cabochon and purely crown work. So I'll extend this line out as I go. I mean, my work's fairly classical, but the detail in it is what I'm known for. I'm really a kind of fine detail jeweler. So this is, this is a new collection that, I'll go f that I'm going to go forward with, which, do, you know, the direction it takes will vary in time, just depending on how I can manipulate the stones and the, and the metal. This group here is all moonstones. Um, these are all one-of-a-kind pieces, but I do a whole group of them together so that they get a cohesive look. Um, I can, again, I, order, I bring in all the settings. We put all the silver into it. Everything's manipulated to fit the stones, and then the graduation of the diamonds um, and the juxtapositions of the stones. We work each one out as we go, and then we do the whole lot as a group. This group here is a continuation of that, and I'm going to Again, this is another area I'll develop, which is Pave in Sterling. Um, and it's beautiful, you know, it works really well, it's very easy, it's day into evening wear. Um, and it's just a beautiful finish. The graduation of the stones, the detail of the settings, pretty fantastic. But everything is cohesive with me as far as the crown work goes. Um, everything from like these bracelets, which is, again, it's lightweight, it makes it more affordable. Um, and it's just luxurious detail. Um, and then we add elements onto it separate to that, um, which is the plique azure enamel, the baked, baked glass enamel. It's just another traditional form of manufacture. So we just add layers on, whether it's the silver and the diamond or the enamel or the type of stones we're using. Each thing is just an additional layer that we add on to the crown work to give it a finished feeling. Um, it's pretty traditional, but it's, this stuff is, is really heirloom jewellery. It's not um, fashion, it's more heirloom. You buy it, it's, people collect it. it, it's lifestyle stuff. I went running in Central Park and I got a bunch of different twigs, small ones, medium, big, and I decided to make pieces, functional, functional art out of them. So um, this is one that with the bu um, buds on it, and then these are just the actual branch itself without. Um, but after I did that, I decided, well, that would look good also as an earring. So I did this um, just to kind of hook into your ear to match with the bangle. 
Um, I have the smaller one with white coral skull. So this is just the tiny, tiny branch here as the setting. So my, my line is based from nature. So I take a lot of pieces from, like I said, twigs from Central Park or um, sea life, um, geodes that are all natural based, comes from the ground. Um, Artie is so beautiful and texturized that I don't really need to do much. You know, I can just put a little, I can enhance it a little more, you know. So, for instance, these guys are um, purple amethyst rocks, geodes, and uh, I electroplated them in gold, and they're beautiful on. And then the geode rocks here, I also go to a lot of mineral fossil shows. And um, when I was, I, so I would collect those from the shows, but I would also, when I was younger, my dad and I would always go hiking on his farm and, and pick up, you know, arrowheads or geodes and, and then make stuff out of that ever since I was little. So I've always been very fascinated with um, crystals and geodes. And then this guy is actually um, a coral branch um, and that, this coral branch here I picked up uh, on the beach with my grandmother. So we were walking and I picked up an actual coral branch itself, very small, and then made the mold of that and then from that formed different earrings, rings. This is the same ring here um, out, of, out of coral. And then this is the earring. When we return, a new jewelry designer from West Africa. Rappaport is the primary source of diamond prices and market information used by the diamond trade all over the world. To get the Rappaport price list, please visit our website, www.rappaport.com or email Priceless at Rappaport.com. She has a contagious smile and story of survival to tell. New designer Grace Freeman explains what inspired her debut liberation necklace at JA New York. But in Africa, we call it an Asa chat. So an Asa chat means that you are a slave under the, another person. You live with the person, you serve the person, but you are not part of the family. My daily life will begin, my daily activity will begin from 3 a.m. to 12 a.m. So in that case, I have only three hours to sleep. And I, the first thing I'll be waking with, with noise, with shouting, she'll be shouting with me, with my name, you dog, come out, what are you doing? And sometimes she'll wake me up with a cold water. And while I sleep, I sleep on the cold floor, on a cold, cracked floor. And I have two dresses in my entire life that I used to work in and wear. Everything was those two dresses. In wearing those two dresses and cooking and doing laundry, washing, doing all the activities as, as a human being I was supposed to do in the house, at night time comes, sleeping on the floor, have cockroaches, have rats, have ants, have incense. So the full scent from the dress also contract the incense or the cockroach to come on my skin. And at the end of the day, I have my skin being chopped up with rats, eating it, or have my hair being messed up. And my life became, started becoming so difficult and difficult and, and difficult. But working hard, I always tell myself that I cannot give up in life. There is no way I can give up. Even I have someone calling me dog, I have someone calling me this name, that you are a bone slave, that you will never be a successful person, but I always look within myself. So I, in the house where I stay, it have a broken door, and the door was only against, it, uh, it, like, it, it was taken away from the angels, like, so it was only laying against the big wall. And behind the door, half a lot of rats, half a lot of clothes, dirty clothes, trash, and things. But I still found the door as a peaceful door. And I went behind that door and made the door my secret place. So I knew how to slip behind the door and squat and take all the dirty clothes and cover myself with it. Even if someone is calling me Grace or Dog, come out, I will always keep my inner peace and sit behind the door. And each time I sit behind the door, I close my eyes 
I see myself traveling around. I see myself in a Miss Fortune. I see myself interacting with this person. I see myself in, it's like being in another real world. So I just want to go to be my peace, to be my life. That was the, my only solution. That was the only thing. Even if I don't have food to eat a day, even if they stop me in the house, they say, great, you are not eating today. But I still find the dough as my happiness. And what I used to eat, I always eat the bottom part, the food from the bottom part of the pot. And I have to strop the cross, take it out and eat it because they always tell me, you are a dog and dogs do not eat food. They do not sleep on bed. It belongs on the floor. You have to eat food from the, the bottom part of the pot. So that is your life, Grace. That is your life. And growing up in those things, growing up with hardship in life, my life being miserable, but I still have that door. I still have the door as my secret place. And in 2008, I was outside washing my clothes, washing, doing all the laundry, doing dishes, cleaning up at the same time, take the kids to school and come back and end the work. And the voice came to me and said, Grace, go inside. Go inside the house. Go inside. And first I got so afraid because number one thing I know about myself, no one called me Grace as a slave. They call me dog. So that is the name I'm expecting to have. That is the name I'm expecting to hear from individual from the house. And I have to say everything, what I knew as a slave was was yes. I never knew the word no. So if you tell me, Grace, do something, I'm going to do it. I would tell you yes. Even if it's good or it's not good, I would tell you yes. But 2008 came in my home. The boys go inside while working out. I became stubborn. I became stubborn, but I could feel my spirit leading to go in the house, to go in the house. But I became so stubborn because I was afraid that if I leave my job, I'll be beaten by the owner of the house. I'll be disgraced by the owner of the house. So I start to take myself away. I start to tell myself that I'm not going in the house. And the voice came for the third time and came more sharper and sharper and said, Grace, go inside. And I started to talk all by myself and I told myself, yes, Grace, go inside, go inside. And when I went in the house, I stood up for a while and then I asked the voice, I said, you brought me in here, what do you have for me? And when I said, what do you have for me? Suddenly my eyes went on my identification card on the table. And I was told not to go around any document, even if the document is belongs to me or not belongs to me, I should see it in a distant room, but not to touch it. But that day I felt that I was already free. I felt that I already have my emancipation within my hand, within my body, with every part of myself. I could feel my spirit leading. I could feel myself in a different land. And I gathered the bravery and told myself that I'm going to take the card, no matter what. And I told God that I'm not a thief, but I think that this is the time for me to be free. That's why you brought me in here to hear the voice go inside and I came here and I saw my ID. So I'm ready to grab my freedom and go away. And I put out the bravery and took my ID card and I ran out of the house. And I gave it to someone that I knew that I trusted very well. And tell the person to read what is on the card because what I already, what I knew was, was only my name on the ID card but I didn't know what was the importance of the card. So I asked the person, can you please read what is on the card and tell me the significant reason for the card? And the person said, yes, this card can free your life. This card can do so many things for you. This card can make you travel anywhere you want to go. And I told the person, can you please keep it? And he said, yes. But when I came home, because the card was missing and I took it away, so the mother of the house told me, where is the card? And I told her, I don't have the card. I told her, I don't have the card. And she said, Grace, 
where is the cat? You dog, where is the cat? And I continue to stand on my ground. I continue to hold my feet and tell myself, I am not giving up because I knew that I was already free. I knew that I was going back to my former day or going any other places, but I already knew that I was free. So what I also kept on myself, I was full on my ground was the faith by telling her no. And that was the first time I ever lift up my head and look within her eyes and tell her no. And I pronounced the word no to her that I don't have the cat. And she beat me up, she disgraced me, she neither killed me and people came and heard me crying in the house. They came in, they took me away and I went straight to social welfare. So I took my card and I told social welfare that I knew someone that I gave my property, my identification card to, so that I could bring the person over to register me. And the person also helped me and I got free I went back to my family. And from that day, I became a great friend. And I'm a great friend. I'm no more a child slave. I'm no more an act such as, but I'm a great friend. As when Grace came into Strong Heart, the very first part of her process involved her academics and her core healing. And then as she became ready to start opening up to the world and learning how she could be an influencer and an advocate and a spokesperson, being a voice for other child slaves and bridging the gap between what's going on in many parts of the world and other parts of the world where we live a very different life. Grace is an advocate for all of those young people. When she got to the point where she was ready for that, we came together, sat down, and went through a process to figure out what, what was really in her heart. What was the message that she wanted to tell to the world? And through that creation process, we worked together with her to come up with a design for the Liberation Necklace. She was involved in every step, all of the drawings, the images, the wax molds, the uh, taking the piece to a, um, a local you know, bead and finding shop, you know, playing with different um, options for the bales, looking at the, uh, the chains, all of that, to figure out what's going to convey her message in a beautiful, in an exquisite way, in a way that it's a glorious piece that people want to wear and want to share and that they connect with on their own, that they themselves connect with. And that is the reception that we have had here. So many people think it is gorgeous, want to, want to carry it as soon as we have it ready. This is literally our prototype, hot off the casting process as of last week to be launched here at the JA New York show. Grace told us she is already planning her next jewelry pieces. Time now to check on how precious metals prices performed this past week. For all the latest industry news, be sure to check diamonds.net and follow us on Twitter and Facebook.